What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another transfer video for you guys today. It's another day of double uploads and Chelsea always like to play tricks on you guys. They always come at you out of nowhere with another transfer room and another player that they look confident in getting and it's happened yet again. Chelsea are very confident that they can sign Edouard Mendy from Rennes now. We thought when Kai Havertz was confirmed that that was going to be it for a little while, but Chelsea never stop. We never sleep. We've kept pushing for new targets. We've known Chelsea were interested in a goalkeeper. We knew Chelsea were interested in a defensive midfielder as well, and we're going to come back into that in this video as well. We're also going to talk about Ethan Ampadu and a loan that's just happened for him over the last 12 hours that no one really saw coming, but we're going to discuss that as well. But before I start this video, if you guys haven't done that already, smash that like button, press that subscribe button as well, and hit the bell notification button to be the first to know whenever I release any new content on this channel. Now, like we said, Kai Havertz was brought in over the last couple days and we thought that that was going to be the end of the transfer window for a little bit for us while we tried to sell some players in order to try and get some more in but we just don't stop like with the rest of these players i think we're going to end up getting rid of some of the deadwood that i spoke about in my previous episode sooner or later but it doesn't look like it's going to be anything sooner it's going to be done later on in the window and chelsea had already inquired about edward mendy with i think one or two previous bids put in i know there was a bid of 14 million pounds rejected by Rennes, who signed the keeper for 3.5 million from Stade Rennes last season. Now, Rennes have put an initial price of 30 million euros to the goalkeeper, but times have changed, and I think Chelsea are looking a lot more confident in trying to get him for a reduced fee. Matt Law's reporting that they can get him for under 20 million pounds, which just sounds like yet another Marina masterclass. And Fabrizio Romano has also reported that Chelsea have entered advanced talks and Chelsea are feeling confident that they can sign the goalkeeper in the next few days. Now, first off, I'm going to say, if Chelsea's confident, then I'm confident because you've seen our recent record. When we want a player, we go get a player and we get him for the price tag that we want. So I'm confident that this deal is going to happen now. I thought Chelsea were still looking at other names. There was plenty of other goalkeepers listed around, but Edouard Mendy was listed as the number one choice. So I guess it was going to be a case of when and not if. And Chelsea were looking for a goalkeeper for a long period of time to try and replace Kepa. No, it was either to try and replace Kepa or to try and compete with him for a spot as well. They initially were looking to try and sell Kepa, but because Chelsea were trying to not make too much of a loss on Kepa, as well as Kepa's 170k a week wages, there was barely any suitors in for Kepa. And it's just looked inevitable that he's going to stay for this season. Not that that is completely a bad thing, because it's still good competition for him that Edouard Mendy's coming in. And Edouard Mendy, I'm not going to throw anything against him as well because he's not a marquee name that we were looking for like Jan Oblak or De Stegen. He's still a great goalkeeper. He offers a lot that Kepa doesn't offer, first being his reach and his wingspan. He made a big name for himself of being commanding of his box in, the, in League 1 last season, which we all know was a big issue for us last season. We know the stat that Kepa didn't come out and catch a corner for the entirety of last season. And we know that's not going to be an issue with Edouard Mendy. He's going to command his box. He's going to have a presence and that's going to be more comfortable for the defender as well. He's also got the backing of Petr Cech, he's got the backing of Christoph Lolishon, who are both very keen admirers of the goalkeeper and this is also the part where I just say I am just a vlogger, I'm a little guy with a camera, I'm not going to say too much against anything that Christoph Lolishon is saying or Petr Cech is saying because that's one of the best goalkeepers in the world and that's the coach that took him up to his level if they're confident that they can do something with Edouard Mendy, I am confident and the thing that makes me happy about this is that this is something that the club's confident in, the club's confident confident that they can get him on a cheaper fee as well than from what Rens originally want. And also, it's good for Kepa, and this isn't to just throw comp Kepa completely out into the mud, because Kepa is going to get chances, and Petr Cech's also said as well, everyone in the cup, everyone in the club, which is Kepa, has a good future at the club, and they hope the best for him. And, Kep and Cech has been a keen admirer, um, uh, I'm not getting my words out, Cech has been a keen admirer of Kepa. Christoph Lolishon, not so much, which is the only thing that they're going to be differing on in this saga, but he's not going to go anywhere. And I always try to look back at the... If you remember 2012-13, after De Gea had his poor season for Manchester United in his initial debut season for the club, and then they brought in Anders Lindegaard to try and compete with him for a spot. And initially, he was starting more games than De Gea as well, but then De Gea came back into the squad. He had an amazing end to the season. He just kicked on from there. And for the next five or six, for the next five or six years, that was was one of the best keepers in the league so I'm hoping this has the same sort of impact on Kepa because people do say 
say they were very similar goalkeepers in Kepa's second season to De Gea's first. Obviously, save percentages and stats are going to look a lot worse on Kepa's side. But there isn't a bad keeper in there. We remember how good he was in the 18-19 season for us. He got the third highest clean sheets in the league that season. There's a good keeper in there. It was just a massive confidence problem that he could just never recover from for the rest of the season. This competition is going to bring the best out of both keepers. And there's going to be competition all over the board for the Chelsea team. That is only good. Those are the good types of selection headaches. It's not Barkley or or what's his name, Bakayoko to start. Or it's not Batshuayi or Morata for who to start. Or Willian or Pedro. It's now Ziyech or Havertz or Mount or Havertz. Or is it Olivier Giroud or Timo Werner. Edouard Mendy or Kepa. Reese James as Equator. There's good options all over the park now. And this is something that title contenders need to have. Potential title contenders. So I'm happy with this transfer. The club's happy. Czech is happy, Lolishon's happy, I'm happy. I, with goalkeeper, it was the same thing for me as it was with a left back. I wanted to get the best option possible, but right now any option was better than what we initially had. So, I'm not going to complain, I'm happy. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Second piece of news, and it's the same thing as well, Chelsea were also interested in the defensive midfielder as well before the window shut and I'm not sure how many players that we need to sell before we do that and I know I've said that in so many videos but we do have to sell some players we do need to get rid of some players before the end of the transfer window I did a big video on that a couple of hours ago so if you guys haven't checked that one out check that one out as well I'm going to leave a link to it down in the description below but there are a couple players that there is a lot of players that we could try and get rid of in this transfer window before it opens I'm thinking players like even players I didn't in my other video like Victor Moses who I think is still on the payroll or Danny Drinkwater who I don't even know why we gave him 100k a week wages and he's just sitting there doing a Winston Bogard and I don't even blame him because it's our fault we gave him those ridiculous wages we've got a lot of players on 70k a week plus wages who are barely playing for the club who aren't going to play for the club and aren't in the club's long-term plans and we need to try and get rid of them and if we can get rid of enough of them that creates enough money to try and get other players and Declan Rice is Chelsea's number one option as defensive midfielder. We know about his link up with the Chelsea Academy. We know about his close relationship with players like Mason Mount and Tammy Abraham and Tamori. We know they went all even went off on summer together to Mykonos and they all had to self-isolate as well as a result of that. But there's a close tight relationship and he's also a great growing DM. Would be the best natural DM that we had at the club. I know I was getting bollocked for saying N'Golo Kante isn't a DM. He can be a DM but he's a natural ball carrier who likes to roam around the field and break play he don't like sitting in one position he can do that in his 30s when his legs fade away like I've always said the McAlady role be perfect for him in the future but it's not him now I think he could have a great pivot with Declan Rice that would be amazing I'm not sure where Kovacic fits in the plans after that but again our midfield is stacked and the selection headache it just is what it is but Declan Rice I'd like to see him come I think it's a deal that is going to happen it's just Will it happen this season or next season or maybe even the season after? I'm not sure, but it's going to happen. West Ham want 80 million for him right now. I don't even know if they would get 80 million for him just because of the madness that Marina's on. I wouldn't be surprised if she gets that in half and just puts off two players going the other way as well. I wouldn't be surprised, but we know Declan Rice is our number one option. So now I'm getting more and more optimistic that we might actually sign him this window because we are playing like it's an actual cheat code this year. This transfer ban literally has set us up so well and the Hazard and Murata money has done a madness as well. So I'm gassed as well, but let me know your thoughts. Final piece of news for today, we're going to talk about Ethan Ampadu, who looks to be going on loan to Sheffield United. Sheffield United haven't leaked this news yet. They haven't put any of the photos out or anything, but pictures have already been leaked of him in the Sheffield United ground taking photos with a shirt. Pictures also been leaked of him taking more photos with a shirt and it looks like it's going to happen and it's already across the line. Chelsea see him as a centre-back, they don't see him as a DM, and with that, I kind of get why they've sent him on loan to a Premier League club, he didn't get a lot of game time for RB Leipzig last season, he isn't going to get a lot of game time at Chelsea if we're being honest, and him going to a Premier League club, especially one of Sheffield United's quality, who were very around the Europa League places last season, I think we're very unlucky not to finish in the top seven. They are going to keep him and they're probably going to play him very regularly. And Premier League football regularly is going to be a good option for him. I'm not sure how he breaks into the defensive structure because they had a very strong defensive setup 
compared to last season. But I think it will be a good move for him. And I still think it would be better than him staying at Chelsea because he just isn't going to get the game time he is compared to whether he goes on loan to whereas it's Sheffield United yeah I know he was interested in Fulham and Norwich as well I thought Norwich would be a good option for him because they're a possession based team who have the majority of the ball and they would look like to, they would play him a lot more regularly he'd still be one of the best players in their side but if he's going to Sheffield United I think it's still going to be a better move than it is for him at Chelsea but guys this is the end of the transfer daily video I hope you guys enjoyed the double upload let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and we'll see you guys very very soon take care up the Chelsea.